All right. Um, clearly not where we wanted to be uh, in early January of 2020. And uh, as owners, certainly not proud of all the changes that have happened since we came on the scene in 2012. Uh, and as owners, we take full responsibility uh, for all those changes. I think at the same time, having uh, been in Northeast Ohio in the city of Cleveland for these past uh, seven years uh, are more determined than ever to, uh, for lack of a better terms, get this right. And uh, we're extremely focused on getting the right head coach and the right GM because we want this to be the kind of environment, kind of team with continuity that, uh, I'll be honest, this organization, our players, uh, this city and Northeast Ohio deserve. And I can't stress enough, um, one, we feel terrible about what's happened, but number two, more determined than ever to get it right as we move forward. And I mean that sincerely. Um, I want to thank Freddie for his two years here. Um, these kind of changes are tough. You spend a lot of time uh, with these people and um, certainly enjoyed our time with him. Uh, we just did not feel like the team made enough progress uh, during the course of the year. And, decided to move forward. We had a lot of conversations with John, who's as good a man as, frankly, we've ever met. Um, tried to find a role for him in the organization that made sense for both, and at the end, just agreed that it made sense for John uh, to leave the organization, and certainly wish both he and Freddie well. I do think this sets us up um, well to first hire a head coach, and then have the head coach be involved in the hiring of the GM. I want to stress it will not solely be the head coach's decision. It will be a collaborative uh, process involving ownership and several other members of uh, top management, if you will, as we hire the GM. Really excited about the slate of candidates we have to interview over the next several days. Uh, coach McCarthy's in here today, and we've been spending some time with him, and we'll do so uh, throughout the day. And um, Peter will make our schedule available as it becomes uh, more firm. Obviously, several of these coaches are involved in the playoffs, and that creates a fluid situation. Um, I think that's it. Um, I think you all know Paul D. Podesta will be leading the process for us. Um, J.W. Johnson, um, Chris Cooper, who does all our cap work and has been with the organization for quite some time, and myself will be the front line of the search process, if you will, but several others in the organization, including D, will be involved in that process. We think Paul is really good at this type of position. If you think about it, really, all he's done his, life, his whole life, or whole adult life, I said, I would should say, is gather data to help make good decisions. So we think he's ideally suited to lead this process. So with that, I'll take any questions you all may have. Jimmy, you look at the common thread in teams that are in the playoffs, and one of the things is patience with the guys. Some of the guys didn't start off well. Some guys have losing records. They stuck with them. Why has this ownership been unwilling or unable to have that kind of patience with, with the regime? Yeah, I think, uh, I think patience and continuity are good as long as you think you have the right people in place. And listen, these are really hard decisions. And it's a tough question to answer because I don't want to you know, come down unduly harsh on people who have been here in the past. I think you all know that's not our style. We just did not feel like we had the right people in place to move forward like we'd like to. And believe me, um, change is hard. this kind of change is hard. It's not something we want to do. I think I started out by saying certainly not something we're proud of, but something we're determined to get right this time. Jimmy, how, how hard a sell will it be for you to convince whoever you want to be the coach that you're going to give them a chance? Yeah, I think it's a good question, a fair question. I'll say this. We're really excited about the um, group of candidates uh, that we're going to be interviewing over the next uh, several days. And I think <laughs> maybe despite all the changes we've made, I, th I think it's a very attractive job. Everybody in the NFL knows how important football is in this area. I think everybody understands we have a really good young quarterback and a really good core group of players. So we're excited about the opportunity to work with these candidates over the next week or two or however long, long it takes. You gave John Dorsey a, a contract a little more than two years ago. He, you trusted him with the first pick in the draft. Before he made some dramatic trades for you. What could he possibly have done that would cause you to go to him and ask 
him to change his contract? Uh, we didn't ask him to change his contract, Pat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We asked John to take a different position in the organization. I don't want to get into all the details. We felt like it was well suited to John's skill set, and, and when we couldn't work it out, we agreed to move forward. So I'll. What did he do that led you? I, I don't. I really don't want to get into that, Pat. I don't think it's fair to John or fair to us. So, like I said, John's a good man, and we're going to move forward. So, how's Coach McCarthy doing today? And is, uh, is NFL head coaching experience a prerequisite? Um, I, I think it'd be unfair to, to, to coach uh, to, to say, but obviously he's got great experience. He's won 62% of his games, and that speaks for himself. Um, so we've really enjoyed our time with him. And pre, uh, head coaching experience is not necessarily a prerequisite. If you'll notice, we're, we're interviewing people who have been head coaches in the NFL and people who are not. Why did you interview Mike last year? Um, that was just a decision that was made by the group. Uh, Jimmy, is Urban Meyer a candidate? Right now, we're just focusing on people with NFL experience. Jimmy, uh, you, you may, just said. I'm sorry. Wait a minute, you just said yeah, NFL experience isn't a requirement. Yeah. Right, now, right now, we're just focused on people with NFL coaching experience. Report that he is a candidate. Could you say it's not true or is it true? Tony, I, I think it's pretty clear what I said. It, Terry. You mentioned one of the things that makes the job attractive is the you met the young quarterback and you know the, the talent that's here. I mean, basically, the guy that brought in most of that talent is the guy that you let go. So, aren't you worried in the sense that the guy that really did bring in a lot of talent is gone? You know, John did a did a nice job for us in some aspects. Okay, and it's like I said, it's I think it's unfair to Kim and unfair to the organization to get in the exact reasons why. We felt like reorganizing the personnel group made sense, Terry, so I'll just leave it at that. Explain for people uh, why uh, you actually will get it right this time and what could, should give people confidence that, that you're going to get it right yeah. this time. Yeah, well, there's no guarantee, okay? Let's be honest, there's no guarantee. So, uh, and it's, I do think we've learned a tremendous amount the hard way, very painful way, and I think we have a much, I think we have a clear, uh, vision and expectation of exactly what we're looking for in both positions. Whatever process what this time around that you guys are now going through to ensure that you don't get 12 to 24 months down the road and be sitting here saying we don't have the right, we didn't have the right people in place to do yeah, that. I, I think we had a good process last time. I, I think I'll say this. I'll say that, I, but I think we'll have a really good process this time. I think we have really good candidates and hopefully we'll pick the right individual, but you know, for me to say I'm overconfident would, would not be, you know, the appropriate thing to say. But I, I would just reiterate what we said at the first. We are very determined to get that right, get it right this time. Whatever you, whatever you do decide, uh, Jimmy, uh, this time around, uh, how committed are you to giving it a chance, even if it maybe doesn't go great initially, just giving it a chance to see it through and, and, and work? We are, but every situation is different, okay? Every situation is different, and there has to be progress made, uh, both on the field and behind the scenes off the field. And so um, you just have to look at every situation it is. I mean, I hope we get it right, and I hope our head coach is here 10 to 15 years and our GM's here 10 to 15 years also. It's a heck of a lot easier on all of us. Talk about process, Jimmy. You, you said you thought the process this most recent time was good. Have there been times in the past when you felt like, you know what, maybe our process and all of this wasn't good, and how would you maybe explain how you think the process of making these decisions and hiring the right people has improved over time? Well, I'll, I mean, I, you all have heard me say this before. When you first come into the league, it's, in, unless you've had real experience, you don't know a lot, okay? And I think the first two or three searches we ran, we did not have process and discipline. I think last time we did much better, and I think this time will be even better in terms of being very disciplined in how we go about things, gathering data, doing really good research, getting references, um, et cetera. I mean, over the last, let's see, we talked to Freddie Sunday night. Um, I can't tell you how many calls various people in this organization have made checking references, uh, doing background checks, gathering data, et cetera. It, it will be very thorough, okay? It has been and will be very thorough. Can you explain exactly how 
the search is being done. You said Paul's leading it, but I mean, who's are you and D making the final decision? Is JW making yeah, the decision? I think this, good question. I think it's ownership will make the final decision, but not in a vacuum. We'll make it with input from Paul, Chris Cooper, who's also going to be on the a search committee with us and various other people in the organization who have had the opportunity to meet and deal with the candidates. You, you're, when you say ownership, is are you? Yeah, dude, let's start. Yeah, let's start with the search committee is Paul, Chris Cooper, JW, and myself. Okay, D will obviously be involved in the, in the final decisions, as will several other people around here whose opinions we value. Through a couple of different, you know. Uh, regimes now. What is it about him that you seem to be drawn to and the organization seems to value um, in what he brings? Yeah, I think well, Paul's a very smart individual, very strategic, uh, very disciplined in his decision making process, and he's been a good thought partner for us. Uh, um, I was just trying to think, kind of get the structure going. So basically, you want to hire the coach first, mm -hmm. and then where does the GM fit in that? Yeah, I think we said that, Terry. So we're going to hire the GM first, and then we'll do the well, excuse me, the coach first. Right. Then we'll do the GM search. Yeah. The coach will be involved in that process. Will not have the final say. Okay, will not have the final say, but will be heavily involved in that process. So, in your all's terms, we will not hopefully we will not have an arranged marriage. Okay. okay? Yeah. Then let me just continue on because I think I know what you're going to ask. The coach and the GM will report to ownership that's, that's as equals and. Obviously, married up with each other. Where will uh, uh, Deepatas? Where will he rank in this hierarchy once the uh, your search is Paul's job will stay exactly the say, same as it is now. Okay, he's in charge of strategy, reports to ownership. Nothing will change. He'll do everything he can to support the GM and the head coach. You've had a bunch of different organizational structures. Why is this the one you prefer right now? You know, I, I think this and. Let's face it, we're learning the hard way, right? Uh, I think this, everybody talks a lot about structure, and I think structure is important, but I think far more important are, the, are these two things, getting the right people and making sure they're aligned, okay? And I think if you, if you looked at all 30 of the other 31 teams, there's all kinds of different structures, right? But if you look at the successful organizations that are consistently in the playoffs year after year, there is alignment within the organization, and they have the right people in the right place, coach and GM. And so that's what we're focusing on tremendously. And that alignment is something that's really, really important. It sounds easy, but it's not. Did you mention like you had that alignment with John Dorsey and Freddie Kitchens? Were they aligned together? I think we can always do better, okay? I think we can always do better. I think the it's really important to get alignment, not just coach and GM, but within the entire organization. Jimmy, you mentioned that you had a very clear vision and expectation for what you want in both positions. What do you want in, in each position? Uh, let, let's start with the, with the coach, okay? Um, well, JW and I probably talked to 25 or 30 of our players on Monday and Tuesday morning, and um, what I would call our core group of players, and Players want uh, leadership. They really do want strong leadership. So we're looking for a strong leader, one, someone who's smart, two, has really good football acumen, three, um, and then is a good, will work within the organization. Okay, it's not my way or the highway. We'll work within the organization for the best result. And I also think we want somebody who's a continuous learner, somebody who's trying to get better all the time. I'd say those are the four or five characteristics. On the GM, it's really not a whole lot different. The leadership piece is a little different um, th than the head coach, but I'd say the other attributes are the same. And the other day you said the role of the general manager is evolving. What do you mean by that? Well, I think it's going, it's going from just being a scout uh, to somebody who is assessing players with a variety of, whether it be traditional scouting, whether it be using data to help make decisions, which is really what analytics is, um, to coordinating other key functions in the organization. Jamie, making Elliott Wolf the GM be the most seamless and not having to blow up the roster? 
Um, you know, I actually think we have a really good football organization, a good, a solid football organization in place. Elliot will m remain in his role. He's here in the building today. We've interfaced with him several times. He's talked with Coach McCarthy this morning. So I think for right now, we're no, I don't think we will go outside the organization to find our next GM. Is that the goal, Jimmy, right now is to keep this roster intact? Typically, when you bring in a new coach, you bring in a new GM, they want to blow up the roster and bring in their own players. So can you yeah, I think that um, if you look over the last couple of years, I think the first thing you have to do is really understand the players in place. And um, it's really important to know your own team. And everybody looks at who we add. And I think it's really important also to look at who we subtract. And don't get me wrong, there could be some changes in the roster. but. We have a pretty solid group of core players who are all extremely young. I was just, the other day, we just happened to have back-to-back -back come in and talk to JW and I, Greedy, who's 21, Max, who's 21, Redwine, who's 21, and Denzel, who's 22, okay? So we have Baker's 24, you know, our old guys, Jarvis and Odell, are 27. So it is a very young group. Miles is 23, 24. So that core group of players is very young. Can't imagine anybody wanting to change that group. You mentioned data and analytics a couple of times to this point. Would you say that you're kind of reverting back to that direction of data and analytics? Yeah, let, let me just, I think th this might be helpful for you all. Okay, when we talk about data and analytics, and analytics is a term that's used more, let me go back to my other world at Pilot, okay? When I used to visit a store, and some of you probably heard me say this 10 or 15 years ago, and let's say you're the store manager in Ashtabula, Ohio, I'd walk in, I'd say, how many of these are, you, are we selling? And you'd say, a ton. Well, I didn't know if that's 2,000 or 200 or 20. Now I ask you that question, you pull up your little handheld and you say, well, we sold 11 today, and last month we sold you know, 412. So we make decisions based on what's actually selling real facts. That's all we're trying to do is take facts that if Baker is better out of a certain formation or a certain play, we're going to try to put him in position where he can be successful. That's all analytics is. It's using data to help you make better decisions. You thought you got away from a little bit? I, I, I think there's a tremendous opportunity for us to do better in that area is all I can say. Okay. He's about to, a couple be, more here. He's about to become the fourth uh, quarterback in NFL history to have four different NFL head coaches right. his first three years in the league with the same team. How concerned are you that the upheaval will affect and has affected his development? Let me say this. Baker caught a lot of grief this year, okay? And I think with everything that was asked to put on his plate, uh, both in terms of leadership and as a player in his first full year, he did a remarkable job, okay? And we need to do everything we can to help Baker realize his full potential and that's something all of us in the organization are focused on. In your time here, do you feel you have had good alignment in the organization? I don't think it's been nearly as good as it should be, and we're extremely focused on that going forward. We'll have final say over roster decisions. Will it be your GM? The GM will have dis decisions over 53, head coach over the 47. Jimmy, how do you? When you talk about leadership and these things, I was looking at some of these other guys that have just been coordinators. For example, the guy from San Francisco, Sarah, yeah. or Brian Dayball, or any of these people. It's just Stefanski. How do you, how do you know? I guess what kind of leader? That's a really be? good question, Terry. Um, because you have um, a lot of really good coordinators who struggle to make the jump to be the head coach slash CEO, and those will be when we talk to. Um, the individuals who are really good coordinators, the questions we ask them will be centered on overall leadership, being the CEO of the organization, how do you not just be a you know glorified coordinator, et cetera, a, a glorified head coach who's really a coordinator. Those are the kind of questions that we'll really zero in on. Sort of seemingly from the outside, how Freddie got the job was he was a good offensive coordinator. I think that's fair. You said we got two more here, Mary Kay. Okay. Last year at the Freddie Kitchen, press conference, uh, you know, you and D and JW kind of sat in, in with the crowd and I don't know, just the way that you guys walked out, you, you just didn't really seem to have 
uh, you know, smiles on your faces or anything like that. Did you have, with the way that it went down last year, where John Dorsey seemed to sort of win out over Paul D. Podesta uh, in the Freddie versus Kevin Stefanski battle at the end, uh, if that's the right way to characterize it, you guys just didn't seem overly thrilled that day. Did you have some reservations? about Freddie Kitchens going No, I d we didn't. Um, first of all, it's an organizational decision, okay, of who the head coach was. And secondly, we wanted John to be front and center up there as his role of all, overall football operations. I felt that was appropriate at the time, so I wouldn't read anything into that. Last one. When you had head coach and GM both reporting to ownership, it, it seemed to set up opportunities for a power struggle. It seemed like you got away from that with John Dorsey. Why are you going back to this setup, and why won't that happen again? Yeah, it, it, really, it goes back to that alignment, right, and make sure the people are properly aligned and everybody's heading toward the same goal and vision. And We talked to the players as a group on, I, think, I guess it was Monday, and we talked to all football operations on Tuesday afternoon. So that's equipment, that's training, that's all the support, personnel, et cetera. And the message was, listen, if it doesn't have to do with one of these three things, you're not doing the right thing. The first is winning. The second is improving as an individual. And the third is helping the team. And we're going to make sure that whoever we hire as a head coach and whoever we hire as a GM is all focused on that, about the Browns winning games, the Browns making the playoffs, et cetera. And that may sound like a soft answer, but we are – Having learned from our past mistakes, we're more determined than ever to get that right this time. And that'll be part, that's why we decided to go head coach first, then GM, uh, so that the head coach could be involved in that process. So, listen, there's no guarantees, you know that, but hopefully we'll have learned from our past mistakes and do a much better job. And I would just close with saying this that we realize that, you know, We've had a tremendous amount of change since we bought the team. We accept responsibility. At the same time, we're more determined than ever to get it right for the Browns, uh, the players, and for the great fans of the Cleveland Browns, which we have the best fans, I believe, in the world. So thanks a lot, guys.